Hey everybody, it's Ryan Bumgardner, and today we're in Honeybrook, where we're at September Farms, and we get to do something I've never done before, which is help make cheese. Now I've gotten to eat it before, and I absolutely love cheese, and they have so many different kinds and varieties here, and I'm gonna get to help. I'm gonna get to separate the curds and whey. I've never done that. Here it's really interesting, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Not only will we get to help make it, we might get to try some of it. So stay with us, we've got a lot to do on today's Inside Access, let's go. It's Ryan Bumgardner, and we're back on Inside Access. Today we're at September Farms, and we're here with Nelson Martin, the general manager. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to be with us. Yes. Now, of course, this isn't that old, the, the store location, but you guys have been around for a while. Right. We've been making cheese for 10 years, mm -hmm. and it all started with the Rotelli family, home on the farm. Okay. And they would have started making cheese on the kitchen table, and then started a retail store in their farm right there underneath the barn. For seven years, they sold cheese there on the farm, and then we expanded to this building here where we are today in 2013. So we're here now a little over two years. And this is and where this the cheese is, is all happening and now. now we bring the milk from the farm okay. here to this location and make the cheese right here at our retail store. So really you guys do everything because you literally have the cows, you feed the cows, right. you milk the yep. cows, it goes right from the farm right to here. Right. And then, do you guys have like your a, a milk tanker truck type yeah. thing? We have a customized trailer pulled with one of the farm tractors okay. and we bring it up the road from the milk house there on the farm and we pump it into the building here and it comes right into the cheese vat through the pasteurizer and start the cheese processing each day we make cheese here. So e even though it's quite the facility now, I mean, it really still is a family farm business. Yes, yes. straight from the farm to the table. Would you great. Say. So we're, we're here in the facility now, and what, what's, what are we gonna see today? We're gonna see cheese making today. We are making a Monterey Jack cheese today. So that's what the process is going on here. And cheese cutting, the processing of wrapping and packaging of the cheese we'll be watching today. The bake shop is busy and dipping ice cream and the restaurant is steaming with customers and serving sandwiches to, in our restaurant also. Well, let's get started. What, what do I gotta do? Okay, we need to get dressed up to go into the cheese room let's to help it. make cheese. What we do, we would wear our gloves and our hairnet and our apron. So you're welcome to get dressed up here to, just to make a sanitized reason for getting ready to go make cheese. And we'll head into the cheese room and start our cheese making. That's great. So we've got our hairnet. Yep. How many different varieties of cheese do you all make? We have about 45 or 50 different flavors. We make a Monterey Jack cheese and a cheddar cheese, but then we add different flavors to make it more interesting. We would have a, you know, anywhere from fruit flavors to hot pepper flavors to different smoke flavors. We are starting a Gouda cheese coming up here in a few weeks, and that's a new cheese that we will be starting making here at September Farm. Do you guys but make any yogurt? We were, be, we're, we're going to be starting to make September Farm yogurt here till March. Wow, so, so yes. you guys, yeah. that's, that's, so that's an exciting step that we're looking forward to. I guess yeah. too. Yeah. Hey, I'm all, we're set all ready here, to go. So let's yeah. get going. Okay. Nelson, explain to us what we're doing now. Okay, we're going to be cutting the curd here, Ryan. We're going to be dropping in our wires. We have a horizontal and a vertical wire. Okay. You can drop yours right in right beside here. Yours. Yep. And then you want to pull, rest your hands on, and then rest, yeah, and then pull just around. And we're going to follow each other down the vat. Right. Today we are making a Monterey Jack cheese, and we need to cut the curd. Yeah, you so can just gonna... swing yours around this way. All right, perfect. Yep. And pull yours out. Pull mine out. And I'll slide mine around. Okay. And, just, and then just I put yours on the other side. Is that yeah. what I'm doing? Yep. You come across. Yep, like that. Perfect. And now I can move Vernon here. will help you drop that in there. Excellent. Thank you. And so again, we'll go back through yours. Just is... the same way. Yep. And we'll cut the curd the other way. Nice. And this creates a weeping part, which separates the the oh, cheese. I can see. Yeah. How about and then that? it releases the whey which we do not use the whey to make the cheese. We use the curd part. Okay, so what does whey get used for? It we actually put it in an underground tank, and a, they come and take it off, I mean, pump it out, and they recycle it by spreading it on the fields. Oh, excellent. And sometimes feeding it to the other animals, pigs, okay, sure. cows, and recycle it in that way. It's a so high just protein. Do, just yep. do it one time? Just one time. Vernon will take the wires and let's wow. get Yep. And so then we just end up going down all the yeah. way through, is that right? Just to make sure we pick up all the edges where we missed the first time through. Yep. Yeah, you can see the yellow watery 
coming out of it. So is that anything like when I think of like the cream going to the top of milk? Is that is that anything? Right. This would basically be the separation. The same. The same, as that. same yes. sort of separation. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Right. And this is called the cross cross, cross cut. Cross cutting. Yes. Okay. We would have done a horizontal and vertical wires, which cuts it from one end to the other, like yeah. we just did. And then this goes through it just to give one more. Well, it's final amazing how much cut. more of you know the liquid part, yes, the whey part that loose. I'm seeing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's funny when you say about curds and whey, yeah. it reminds me of the old, the little nursery yep, rhyme nursery from the kid. Yep. So what does that exactly mean? It makes me think, what, how is she eating her curds and whey? She's Apparently like, she's eating she's this separated. right here. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Good. Thank you, Ron. Hey, yeah. th that's amazing to look yeah. at the difference from when we started. Yeah. When we started, it was like a yogurt, exactly. a nice white yogurt texture, and now exactly. we broke it up. So, yeah. Could, could, could you make cheese in a little? You couldn't do that at oh, home, could you? At home. That's could what you? we started out. Is that I mean, right? Years ago, when he first started, Dave Bertelli himself starting on the kitchen table at home with, with his little cooking. kettle and a little press, and he would have done the cheese making. His first batches would have been made on the kitchen table like 10 years could ago. Could have been done. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Good. So now explain what's going on here, okay. Nelson. We are running, this is an automated uh, agitator with circulates from one end to the other and circulates as a breaking it apart and then at the same time we're bringing boiling water into the vat which rises the temperature and every two minutes we would check the temperature and check the the consistency of it and what it is is we're heating up the curds in the way to help it to separate by heating it up and, and agitating it and stirring it is what's going to break the whey apart from the curd. So then you'll you'll drain the whey off. Way off. Yep. You've got this big chunk of yes. cheese, so yes. to speak. So now where do you go with that? What do you do? Okay, we basically, when we're, all the whey is off, we would rake, rake all the curds to the side so that all the whey is continuous to drain. The slope of the bottom of the vat is sloped to the center. Yep, and it all drains to the bottom, to that end, out the drain, and goes into our tank. And then the curds that are left are the fine little round balls of curds. We are making a Monterey Jack cheese today, and that curd is what we would use to stack into our boxes like we have here in the rack. And those would be our cheese boxes where we would stack in and press in and add our flavors at that time. And we want pepperoni jack or we want blueberry jack or strawberry jack. At that point, we would add those flavors with each box as we pack it in. And then it would get pressed into our press into a big block of cheese that we would put in the cooler then and age and then bring it out and cut it for retail bars. And then you're gonna cut it in the smaller size. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's so, great. This is cool. Yeah. Well hey, let's go check that out. Can we okay. do that? Okay, sure, no problem. So okay. here this is the actual box of course. Right. This is the, the box of cheese that we would have stacked in and it gets pressed in the press here. And now when it's all pressed and molded together, we would re we unpack it the cheese and today we are doing a chili pepper. And this is the box that we stacked it in. We have a cheese ball form that keeps the cheese in the box and helps it from squeezing out the cracks in the boxes. We would unwrap the cheese ball form that. And that's a throwaway nylon cheese ball that we do throw out. And we do not reuse that. Uh, and I heard this cheese is pretty special because it won first place at the farm show. Yes, this effect. is our blue ribbon from this that's January great. at the Pennsylvania Farm Show, the Cheese Association. And this would take the shell right off, stack that up, and the cheese cloth comes off. Wow, and it looks fantastic. And then we would take the bag and slide it in our bag, which is a Cryvac seal bag, and we would seal it in. Yep. And then we would package it and already label it with the batch number, the flavor, and the date right on the bag as we store it in our refrigerator walk-in cooler, and then that would age there for three months before we get it out and put it in wow. to the retail store, and then it would get cut into the eight ounce bars right out of this so bar. This particular cheese was made yesterday. Yes. But it's going to be three months from now until so anybody's going to get it out of the cooler and use it for our retail in sure. any way. Yeah. So do different cheeses age at different lengths? Well, most, most, of, our, most of our cheese we try age at least three months okay. in the cooler. But our cheddar, we do sell a three-month-old cheddar, a six-month-old cheddar, a one-year cheddar, two-year cheddar, three-year cheddar, and a six-year cheddar here in our store. So there's a, there's one that's done cheddar this week ages. that will be six years yes. before anybody gets to try. And well. cheddar, the longer it ages, the sharper it is and the more flavorable it is. Our jack cheese does not age that way. Our jack cheese is something that you would 
we would age three months before we retail it, and it would go up to a year for eating it. You know, nine months to a year that we would say it would be good for before it breaks down and gets more creamy. Okay, so the good news is if I buy cheese and I put it in my refrigerator, I don't have to feel like I have to eat it next no, week. I've got a it's good shelf life. It's and, good. and then if it gets moldy, then it's called something That's else something. and I, I can resell it for more. No, I'm <laughs> For a higher price. For a higher price, exactly. <laughs> yep. So now this goes in the uh, your refrigerator for three months, yep. and then you go to another place where you're actually going to cut it in yes. small squares. And then label it and wax coat our cheddars and put it in individual bags and get it ready for retail. Right. Can yep. we go check that out? Sure. Let's do yep. it. That's next. Perfect. So she's got the big yep. block of cheese right now. Yes. We bring it in and then she does the first cut like you're seeing there, which slices it into wedge, like big slabs. Right. And then she'll take one of those slabs, she'll have to change the wires in the, the press to the eight ounce block. That was just wires that cut it into two different slabs. Okay. And then she'll change the harp. It's the cheese harp. The cheese harp. harp. I've never and seen has, a cheese harp. Yeah. And has the wires on just like a harp. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And then she'll get the next harp, which is designed for the eight ounce blocks. Okay. And that will take the, the slab that she cut on half there, will now come up through that that harp, which will cut it into our eight ounce retail blocks okay. that we use for our retail store. So then, is that what cheese ends are called? Because it's the end it's of the those, edges, where it's not going to be exactly yep. eight ounces. Right, right. Our block is a big block, and when she takes it through that harp, it's going to give edges. Yep. So those edges are actually the cheese ends that we put in, in a in bag it up, and we sell it at reduced price as cheese yeah. ends, which would be the edges of the big block okay. after we cut our eight ounce retail blocks out. And we would get 36 bars out of each block of cheese, two slabs that she cut first. And then it's now cutting it through, and it takes time. You don't want to break your wires by going too fast. And the edges that she's pulling off would be our cheese ends, which would be the edge. There's nothing the matter with it. It's the same quality cheese. It's just that we save that and bag it up and sell it as reduced price cheese ends. And because it's not going to be exactly eight ounces, right. where the other we ones in the middle, it's going to be exact. And she weighs each bar to make sure that we are legally the eight ounce for our retail value. And each bar gets set on the scales. That's what she's doing there. She sets it over here. And then, like I said, then the, the cheese ends get bagged and weighed by the pound. And each bag is like a different weight. And so is the legal weight, I'm assuming, half a pound? Is that? Yes. Because I'm noticing. We sell all our bars. I'm noticing everything's. 0.54 yes. is about, yep. so you're, yep. you're, you've got a little, sure. little bit, yep. you want to make you absolutely sure. Yeah, you just got about 0.04 yep. extra, that's yeah. great. Huh. Uh, yeah. Great, so then when it's in these bars, what, it's either going to get packaged in, in a plastic what? sleeve, we would vacuum seal our jack cheeses in a plastic sleeve, okay. and we have a, a vacuum seal machine here behind us, and that would be sucking the air out and vacuum seal in our jack cheeses. Our cheddar cheeses that we have here today, we are we hand dip those into a wax, a food grade wax, and we coat them in a wax coating for retail. For, uh, so what's the diff different types of cheese? Are, are done better in different no, packaging? We, just, or is we, it we as a company decided to do our cheddar cheeses in our wax coating just to bring back the artistic, authentic yeah. way that they used to years ago before so plastic would, was invented. Yes, okay. years ago before plastic was invented, they did all their cheeses in wax coating. We choose to do our cheddar cheeses in the wax coating just to distinguish, but it does not change the quality of the cheese flavor, and flavor, no. And our cheddars, we have different color wax to distinguish the flavors of it, but it does not have anything to do with the flavor of the cheese other than wow. color coating it. I wouldn't mind checking out this yes. waxing because I've never seen we, wax cheese. So we will go there. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, this is how we do our cheddar cheese. We do wax coat our cheddar cheese, which okay. each eight ounce bar, like we cut previously, gets yep. a clear coat wax on, which mm -hmm. we dip, dip them in and do one end at a time. We turn them up so the wet end dries. We set them down, and then you, yep, you would grab, I'll let you do one okay. more here. Yep, and you grab them like this, and you dip them in the wax, bring them up, and then you turn them up right to stand them up like pillars so they dry, and then we would put a colored coat over top. But each bar gets two dips. That's great. Just let them drip off and then stack them up. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. And then we would dip the so next two in. So then basically we're doing half, and yep. then and the uh, other half the other is, half is We do the other half, and they get one coat of the clear wax, and then we would put the color coat so they all get double dipped gotcha. wax coating. 
on them, but they all get a clear wax first, and then we have colors that distinguishes the different flavors. Yeah. But the colors have nothing to do with the flavor of the cheese, other than telling us which cheese is inside which the wax. they're going to be, exactly. Yep, that's great. And by flipping them up and put the wet end up so they dry and it dries very rapidly. I'm sure, yeah, that's yeah. great. Okay, that's Excellent. great. Excellent, good. And our next step would be putting the colored the color wax on. Right? Let's yep. do it. And then we'll go to that. Okay, so we've okay. got the clear wax on, right? Right. And the purpose of the clear wax was to seal the cheese so that the color wax does not change the color of the cheese. Gotcha. So that's the reason we put the clear wax on first. Sure. So that when we put the color on top of it, that the yeah. colors ain't changing the cheese. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds good. So and now we're the colored wax. Yes. And now we're putting the brown on, which would distinguish our smoked cheddar. All each right. color has a distinguished color for each flavor. Today we're dipping brown, which is our smoked cheddar. Perfect. So we have Sadie Mae here, Hi, Sadie. and she will be dipping the brown wax on, which would finish up one end at a time, so she dries so and she in. Yep. And then she does the other end. Mm -hmm. Very and good does each end in the, in the crock pots of the melting wax. So does that color coat actually get on twice? Because I see they're already colored a little bit. Or is that right. just from... Yep, we do double dip of the colored also gotcha. to give the true brown color on top of the clear that we did previously. And it looks like it dries really fast Oh, as it well. does. Yeah. Yes, it does. So yep. then we're left yep. with one of these with the, bars. Yep. And, and then at that point, we would do the labeling. We have the, the Honeybrook cheddar label and it says smoke on the top which we are doing the smoke cheddar that would get placed right on the bar we would label each block of cheese so it's all ready for retail and wholesale we do a lot of wholesale cheese also to local farmers markets grocery stores restaurants wineries in the local area okay so that's all ready for wholesale and retail an eight ounce bar labeled ready to go so three months later we're there set. we go. All there right. we go. Excellent. Yep. Of course, now comes the fun part. Now you get to eat eating it. Yes, exactly. You're right. All and right. the best, straight from the farm. That's great. Hey, right. really appreciate it, Nelson. This yes. is absolutely fascinating. Thank okay. you very much. Yes. Thank hey, you. Hey, stick around. We will be right back. Come join us for the next Singspiration Christian Cruise. For 2016, we set sail on Royal Caribbean's beautiful Explorer of the Seas on a seven-night Alaska cruise sailing round trip from Seattle, Washington. Cruise the Inside Passage in Tracy Arm Fjord. We stop in Juneau, the capital of Alaska, where you can join us on a wildlife expedition where we'll look for humpback and killer whales, sea lions, and much more. Plus, a stop up the famous Mendenhall Glacier. At Skagway, you can enjoy the quaint mining town, walk to the miner's graveyard from a century ago, visit the picturesque waterfalls, or take a three-hour train ride to the Yukon and back. Whatever you decide, adventure awaits. Our final stop is Victoria, the capital of British Columbia. There you can explore the town, shop, or join us as we take an exclusively chartered bus trip. After driving through the city, we'll head to the world famous Butchered Gardens. Join artists and musicians from all around the country such as the Needhams, Jonathan White, Midnight Cry, Ryan and Friends, and many other artists for concerts, Christian comedy shows, and breakout events. Cabins start at $1,099 per person and includes cruise fare, Port fees and taxes, as well as all concerts and group seminars. And don't forget about the gourmet meals, daily buffets, and free room service included in the price. Call Times to Remember Travel at 1-800-962-6902 to reserve your cabin for this once-in-a-lifetime trip. Hurry, cabins are selling quickly and you don't want to miss the boat. Well, we're back, and the great thing is, you guys started with cheese t a little over 10 years ago, and it's just, you know, taken off, which is fantastic. You do a whole lot more than cheese now, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We also, when we moved here, we created a bake shop area where we do our homemade salt pretzels, we do cheese tarts, we do fruit pies, we do coffee cakes, and many a variety of oh, things great. that we do out of our bake shop here, which has increased quite a rapidly since we opened this building yeah. here. What do you have here? These are we have the cherry pie, cherry and blueberry pie. pie, and an apple pie oh, that we had just pulled out of the oven here this morning. Okay. Yes. And, and then our cheese tarts. That's cheese a, tarts. a little mini cheesecake made in a cupcake size that we also started making on the farm. And as okay. we came here, we do thousands of those. And we started wholesaling those also, okay. along with our cheese. And, and you guys have a lot here, not only to come and shop and take home with you, but there's stuff to actually, you can sit down and eat here. Right? Yes, we do. Yes, we can head over that way. Now we have a restaurant also that we started here when we opened this facility. We do a sandwich and homemade soups, and we have hand-dipped ice cream also Ooh. that we have here, homemade well, ice cream. Well, this has been fantastic, yes. but we got to see it all, but now... Yes, we will. We can head on over to the restaurant. And eat it. All right, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So this is the this is the this good is part. It. This is the best. We were waiting for this. Yep. Oh then we get the sample. Wow. These are the sandwiches that come out of our restaurant here in our cheese wow. curds. This is great. That would be the honey broker. The honey broker. Signature sandwich. Oh, really? and then, yes, very much so. We're, from the Honeybrook area. Uh -huh. That's our classic grilled cheese sandwich, which would be our cheddar cheeses in that, our homemade bread, okay. homemade butter, and our cheddar cheese straight off wow. the farm. And the Honeybrooker, and now of course yeah, our famous got? cheese curds. We cheese can't forget those. Curds. Those are the fresh cheddar curds that we dust a breading on and freeze them, and then we would deep fry them in our canola oil, oh. just like French fries, and it's so like, like fresh mini cheese, cheese sticks. Mini cheese, yep. but maybe yep. even the and our fresh cheese curds. Oh my goodness. And it's Yes, the cheddar cheese curd that was not aged or pressed, you know, it's mm -hmm. not pressed into a block of cheese. It would be the fresh curds right out of the vat. And then we dust our breading on and freeze them. And, and then we deep fry them. Yep, wow. and that's a ranch dressing that we serve with them. Wow. But that is our, our fresh cheese curds. Mm. And our two sandwiches here, we have the grilled homemade bread, our cheddar cheese. It has turkey and bacon and a fresh slice of tomato and Italian dressing down wow. over as a, a signature sandwich there coming out of our restaurant. Yep. That is pretty neat. And then yeah. you said this is the... This is the, the classic toasted grilled cheese, which is homemade bread, homemade butter on the grill with our cheddar cheese melted in the, the sandwich. So as a grilled just cheese. like what I grew up That's eating exactly, as a kid. Just like oh. grandma made, mm. yeah. but better. And but better. Our, our cheddar <laughs> cheese. cheese there we go. So yeah. as you were creating the cafe, yes. were you looking for ways to feature some of the, you know, of our cheese? Own right. Straight off the farm. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, yes. That is what we were striving for. I mean, right. they use our own product coming out of our retail store. Well, I didn't even give it, think a lot about it, but there are a lot of things yes. that are special about the cafe. From September 4th. And of course, you're going to have not only sandwiches, you have french fries and all that kind of Yes, thing. we have french fries, we have hoagies, we have deli sandwiches, we have wraps, we have quesadillas, we have breakfast. Breakfast is another mm -hmm. line. We do fresh breakfast egg sandwiches right off the grill, and those would be homemade potato rolls with an egg sandwich. You can choose your bacon, sausage, or or ham on that also. We have um, we have omelets, we have pancakes, we have French toast. Omelets with cheese, of course. Yes, of course, as our cheddar cheese and the omelets also, yes. Now, this isn't cheese over here, though. What do no, we have here? No, this comes straight from our bake shop. This would be our cheese tarts. We started making those on the farm. We only sold them on Fridays and Saturdays on the farm. As we moved here, seven. I mean, we moved here to this location, we started making them every day, and we sell them here in our retail store. It's a miniature cheesecake one serving in a cupcake size, which would be wow. a cheesecake. That's a peanut butter flavored right there that has a peanut butter cup tucked in the middle of it. So it has the, it's a cheesecake with a peanut butter. That would be a raspberry white chocolate. So what a, that has a, a Reese peanut, 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 yep, peanut butter cup right in the bottom. What that would have a raspberry, a raspberry jelly in the bottom, oh which would be white chocolate drizzled on the top. And it's a raspberry cheese tart, which is a mini serving size of a cheesecake. I'm not sure which is better. So you, hey, you get, they're all good. They're, you gotta get one of each, right? right, right. Wow. Yeah. So no, that would be our specialty coming from our bake shop, alongside of our other bake, bakery items. Really? So really, I mean, it's a breakfast, lunch, and dinner place, right. just like any other it's restaurant. An all day, yes. And then we have featured meals in the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We do the cheese steaks beside our regular restaurant on Wednesday okay. nights from four to eight. Thursday night we do burger night, and then Saturday, Friday night we do the fish fry and crab cakes and shrimp alongside of our other it, menu items. That's great. And you even have ice cream. Yes, we have homemade ice cream straight <laughs> off the farm. This has been yes. fa fantastic. Yes. Thank you so yes. much for everything. Good enough, Ryan. Stick around Good. because we're going to maybe go out and check that ice cream out yet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us on today's Inside Access. I hope you had as much fun at home learning about cheese as I had making it here. Thanks to Nelson for being an awesome tour guide. Got to make some cheese. We got to taste some at the cafe. And now we're finishing up with maybe some coffees and some soft ice cream. A lot of fun. Great. Thanks for hosting us today. No problem. Stop by September Farms, guys. You'll have a great time. We'll see you next time on Inside Access. All right. Now we get to the good stuff. Mm. Hey, everybody. We're Ryan. We're Ryan Bum. The, 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 the.